I first of all would like to thank uh, the organizing team of PSG and Dr. Rutul sir. So the topic which was given to me was the ideal time to screen for glucose intolerance postpartum in GDM. So when this topic was given to me, I thought it can be answered in one line. But then you need to have evidences to prove when to do, whom to do and how to do. So that is the idea behind. So going on to the topic, as you all know, that gestational diabetes mellitus is defined as any degree of glucose intolerance with onset or first recognition during pregnancy. And GDM complicates 4 to 18% of the pregnancies in India annually. So what does this definition imply? So the implications of the definition is that she may continue to be a diabetic or become normal postpartum. Hence, postpartum survey in GDM is a must. So who are the population at risk? Those who are overweight, obese, physically inactive, polycystic ovarian syndrome, pre-diabetic, GDM in previous pregnancy, family history of diabetes, multiple pregnancy, advanced maternal age, and smoking during pregnancy. So you're all aware of this, the complications during pregnancy, the fetal complications are preterm delivery, congenital malformations, cardiovascular, and the uh, other uh, neural tube defects. As far as the maternal complications are concerned, preeclampsia occurs in 10% of women with GDM who are younger, nulliparous, obese, and gain more weight during pregnancy. The other complications would include diabetic nephropathy, neuropathy, retinopathy, urinary tract infections, and infections per se, chorioamnionitis, and diabetic ketoacidosis. So as far as the plasma glucose concentration is concerned, there are various organizations, the ADA, ACOG, NICE, the IADS, uh, DPSG, but universally DIPSI has been followed in India as well as other Asian countries. So as far as DIPSI is concerned, the secondary blood glucose level if it is more than or equal to 200, it is over DM. And if it is more than or equal to 140, it is gestational diabetes mellitus. And more than or equal to 120 milligram per DL, previously impaired glucose tolerance, now it is called as gestational glucose intolerance. So the DIPSI guidelines, you're all aware that it is a universal screening and the first visit at the first trimester and when it is negative at 24 to 28 weeks, and then again at 32 to 34 weeks. So the method is 75 grams of OGCT with a single plasma glucose at two hours irrespective of the last meal. More than 140 milligram per DL is a gestational diabetes mellitus. Now going on to the pop, uh, topic proper, postnatal follow-up and screening, when do you do? So ideally, we do it on the, that is on the 6 to 12 weeks, where again, the 75 grams of OGCT is given and a 2-hour plasma glucose is estimated. Then yearly, that is after one year you do, and then annually it is followed by fasting and postprandial glucose. So all the postnatal patients need to be, all patients need to be encouraged to do exercise and to lose weight. All patients should be evaluated for glucose intolerance or diabetes mellitus before the subsequent pregnancy, which is a very important point. So why at all we have to do a postpartum screening? What is the necessity? The placental hormones which were responsible for the increase in the blood sugar levels, that is the human placental lactogen, progesterone, prolactin, cortisol and the tumor necrosis factor, what they do? They tend to deplete 48 hours following delivery. It is essential to identify those at risk of developing diabetes at an earlier stage to decrease the morbidity of the disease. 
80% of the patients become normal following delivery. 20% continue to be a diabetic or have chances of developing diabetes later in life. Hence, the need of early testing in postpartum period is essential because it may be misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed or it can be undertreated. So, as far as our patients are concerned, in our setup, you know, there are various barriers in this postpartum screening we need to understand. It can be absence of self-care, lack of awareness of the public health services, not understanding the necessity of the test, family members may not be supportive to follow up, long distance at healthcare services, and migration after delivery. They, may, they might migrate to other places, poverty, the most important cause, altered priorities, and considering themselves as healthy. They may think that they are healthy and they may not come for postnatal follow-up. So, we went into the review of the literature and we wanted to prove again, so what is the day and which is the ideal time to screen a postnatal mother. So, there were studies which are cons uh, done outside as well as within India and one study which was published in the BMJ and uh, they did a study on the predictors of the postpartum glucose intolerance in women with gestational diabetes mellitus, a prospective cohort study in Ethiop Ethiopia based on the updated diagnostic criteria. So it was done in 2020 and in that 112 women whose incidence of postpartum glucose intolerance was 21.4% inclusive of 18.7% pre-diabetes and 2.7% diabetes at 6 to 12 weeks. Multivariable logistic regression analysis revealed that advanced maternal age, high fasting plasma glucose level at the diagnosis, overweight and or obesity and the antenatal depression were the predictors of postpartum glucose intolerance. The drawback of this study was that the glucose intolerance was identified only at six weeks postpartum and they did not comment the ideal time to do a postpartum screening or follow-up. Yet another study which was published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the conclusion was a normal oral glucose tolerance test during delivery, hospitalization appears to exclude the postpartum type 2 diabetes mellitus. However, the results of the immediate postpartum oral glucose tolerance test were mixed when including the impaired fasting glucose or the impaired glucose tolerance. Again, the drawback of the study was that, again, they were not able to give the ideal time for screening. Now came the Indians. So, in the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, they again did a study and the postpartum follow-up was soon after delivery and in one year in a woman with normal results and when, what, when it was abnormal, they followed up three to six months later. The drawback again was they were not able to give the ideal time for the postpartum screening. So, Ladies and gentlemen, please let me know what is the ideal time to screen a postpartum woman. Who can give an answer to this? It is none other than our Professor Emeritus, Professor Seshaya, who gave an answer for this. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, it is a real pride on my part to say that sir did a study and we with the able guidance of Professor Seshaya and Professor Dr. Anjalakshi Chandrasekhar at our institute, Institute of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Egmore and Government Kasurva Gandhi Hospital of Madras Medical College. We did a study on the predictive value of early versus late postpartum glucose challenge test among patients with gestational diabetes mellitus. So the duration of the study was from January 2022 to October 2022. The study center, as I mentioned, was 
Institute of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Government Kasturba Gandhi Hospital of Madras Medical College. And the study population was 150 women who have diagnosed as gestational diabetes. The study design was a prospective cohort study. The inclusion criteria, all GDM patients were delivered in KGH and IOG. And the exclusion criteria was a known case of type 1 or type 2 diabetes mellitus. They were excluded. Associated medical disorders like gestational hypertension, heart disease and seizure disorder were excluded from the study. So how was it done? The procedure of the study was GDM mothers were advised to take post 75 grams of glucose and the 2-hour plasma glucose on the postnatal day 3. We did a OGCT. The diabetologist's opinion was obtained with the 2-hour post-glucose values on the postnatal day 3 and the patient was un uh, advised to continue either a meal plan or if she had higher values of oral hypoglycemic agents or insulin according to their glycemic control, weight reduction, lifestyle modification, healthy diet and postpartum GDF follow-up with a 275-gram uh, OGCT at 6 weeks while the patient had to come for vaccination, that is the postnatal day 42 with her infant. So now these are the results of the study. So what happened at postnatal day 3? There were 43% with no treatment, 9% who are on insulin, and 31% with the medical nutrition therapy, and 17% with the OHA. So the OGCT on the postnatal day 3 showed euglycemia in 43%, impaired glycemic status requiring meal plan 31%, and OHA 17%, and insulin among 9%. So what happened in the treatment and in the postnatal day 42? that is six weeks later. So the pay, uh, persons who had no treatment was 43% and insulin, it was 6%. Medical nutrition therapy was 34% and oral hypoglycemic agents, it was 19%. You see the rate of insulin has come down. So this itself shows very clearly that those who have identified on the postnatal day three with therapy had improved very well and on the postnatal day 42, the levels of the therapy worked very well such that the percentage came down. So, ladies and gentlemen, please note what if we had missed and we have not done a uh, postnatal follow-up at day 3 and just on to 42, they would have, many patients would have been misdiagnosed and they would have gone undertreated. So the conclusion of the study was the early OGCT could deduct pre-diabetes and diabetes with a sensitivity of 84%, specificity of 80.2%, diagnostic accuracy of 80.95%, the positive predictive value being 72.2% and the negative predictive value being 95.2%. So what happens after delivery? After delivery, in the postpartum period, the human placental lactogen, which was the main culprit in the occurrence of gestational diabetes mellitus, along with the other diabetogenic hormones, falls after 48 hours. Most of the hormones are cleared of the blood after 72 hours. So OGCT on day 3 is almost 80% predicting the onset of type 2 diabetes as compared to the OGCT on postnatal day 42. So the answer to my topic is the ideal time to screen a postnatal mother is day 3, which was proved and uh, we did the study under the guidance of Professor Dr. Seshaya. We were able to prove this and this is going to be published and sir is working on it. So it's a real uh, uh, feather on a cap of Professor Dr. Seshia. So concluding that old early OGCT test serves as a valuable tool not only in deducting a delayed impaired glucose tolerance but also proves if timely intervened can reduce the morbidity of GDM patients by reducing the glucose tolerance ranges. The most important thing is that not only finding the ideal time of screening and follow-up of the patient as postnatal day 3 
you should imagine that all the patients are with us on the third day. Because cesarean patients, we discharge on the eighth day. But postnatal patients uh, on normal delivery, we discharge on the third day. So you get a 100% coverage of all the patients and you're not going to miss even a single case. So that is the idea behind. And I conclude by saying that the postnatal day three is the ideal time to screen a postnatal mother. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the patient listening.